Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. Just very quick in this video, how you can crop an image in Android using a library, because I don't recommend to implement that on your own. That is really complex and you have to deal with image matrix calculations and all that stuff. So you really want to use a library for that. So I'm in an empty Android Studio project here and we first want to include that library. You will find the dependencies for that in this video's description. So we open our build.gradle app file scroll down and those are actually two dependencies here on the one hand this um, image cropper library here that i really like that is just used to crop images and we have that activity ktx dependency which is the new way of actually getting a result from an activity so we will use activity result contracts here but what that is you will understand when we actually get to this point so next we want to click on sync now to sync these dependencies with our project and then we can jump into activity main xml so here we have a text view that android studio uh, created for us i go to the code tab and i change this text view to a button we can change the text to choose image and we give this button an id of button choose image so when we click on that button then we will actually open a dialog to either um, make a new image from the camera or to actually select an existing image from the gallery and when we selected that image or when we made that image then we want to display that cropped image in an image view here so we create an image view um, with match parent actually and 0dp here and then we can actually give this an id of iv cropped image and i will give this a constraint dimension ratio of 16 to 9 so just that it fills the whole width here and the height is always adjusted accordingly so that we actually have a 16 to 9 um, ratio here and then we can actually close that tag off go to our design tab and set the constraints for that image view you can see here it is we just want to center that horizontally in parent we constrain the bottom to the button top and the top to the parent top like this and then we can jump into main activity so how does this essentially work so since we included our library, that library comes with an extra activity here. And in that activity, the library handles um, cropping that image that we actually can also select from within that activity. All we need to do is we need to launch that activity for result so that we can actually get the result out of that. So the result is in our case, the cropped image, because that is what we are interested in here. And in the past, we used this um, on activity result function here to actually get the result of an activity that we started. But you can see that is deprecated here, at least in API level 30, which is the latest one. And I actually show you the new way of doing that. And that's why we included that dependency, that activity KTX dependency here. And that new way is called using activity result contracts. So if we just go into an empty space here and write activity um, result contracts, you can see that is a class that was included here since we um, have that dependency, that activity KTX dependency. And that contains a lot of contracts here that somehow describe an action that we want to perform with another activity. So we could create a document, we could get content. So get content would, for example, be interesting for us if we would launch a gallery activity and we want to just choose an image of that gallery activity, but we don't care about um, which gallery app that user actually chooses here. But for our purpose here, we won't find the activity or the the result contract that we actually need for our app in this list here instead what we need to do is we need to define our custom contract so up here as a global variable we will define a private val crop activity result 
contract. And we set that equal to object colon activity result contract here without an S. And you can see that takes two generic parameters, I and O, so in and out. Um, very often you also want to pass a parameter here to that activity that you want to start. In our case, we don't do that. But you would have the option here to do that with that in parameter. And here we just specify the type of that, which in our case is just any and nullable. So we don't really care about that. We don't need that. You might think that we have an image that we actually give to that activity, but that's not true because the activity here in this particular library handles that on its own. So when we start the activity, the activity will actually um, make sure to get that image that we actually want to crop. But we also want to specify an out parameter. And that is now interesting for us because we get an image out of that result contract. So we just define a contract between our main activity and the activity that comes from our library. And that contract kind of defines, hey, um, I just want to have a cropped image of you. I give you an image and you crop it for me. That is the idea behind these activity result contracts. So the output parameter is of type URI. So just the URI of the cropped image. I need to import that here. And by the way, if you want to use these activity result contracts in fragments, then you need an additional de dependency for fragment KDX, but I don't need that here. Just that you are not confused if you want to implement that in fragments. So we call the constructor and open uh, curly brackets. And in here we can press control I to implement these two functions, create intent and parse result. So with create intent, we actually need to return the intent that starts our activity. So our crop activity in this case. So we return crop image um, dot activity. So that is an activity builder pattern. And now we can just specify some options that we want to pass to these to this crop image activity. So we, for example, want to set the aspect ratio. So we can define a fixed ratio. This image can be cropped in. If you don't want that, so if you want the user to um, choose any dimension of cropping that image, you shouldn't set this parameter here. But since we set the dimensions of our image view to 16 to 9, we also want to do that here. And then you could set the guidelines here, the crop shape. Um, but I will just get the intent here. Um, oops, get intent. And that, that just takes the context. So this at main activity. The second function is parse result. So in that function, we just get that intent, that result intent that was returned from the crop image activity. And now we need to return the URI that actually refers to the corrupt image. So here we can actually return um, crop image dot get activity result. And that um, takes in the data, so the intent that was returned. And we can just pass that intent here, make a null check, and write a URI. So that will now be the URI to the corrupt image that we can display in our image view. And that is now better than this old way of doing that, that on start activity for result function, because this is a type safe way. So we know that when we start this activity for result, we get a URI out of that. With the old way, that wasn't that clear. So in on create, I will actually first get some references to our views because Kotlin synthetics is not included anymore by default. So val button choose image is equal to find view by D. Um, that's a button. Import that r.id button choose image. Control D to duplicate that. IV cropped image. Image view. And button, oh, not button, IV cropped image here. So how can we actually now execute that activity result contract we defined here? 
For that, we need a so-called activity result launcher. So we define that private late init var crop activity result launcher. Uh, this one here, and that also just takes the in parameter here. So in our in our case, just of type any and nullable. We don't need that, and we will just pass null for that. And then we can set that equal to register activity for result. Uh, yeah. And here we need to pass that contract. So crop activity result contract. And we open curly brackets. And I just made a mistake here. We don't want to assign the contract. We want to assign the launcher, of course. Then <laughs> the error is gone. So here, we register that activity for result with this contract we defined. So we just tell our um, app here, hey, we want to apply that contract. We want to execute that app, um, that activity, so that crop activity. And we want to get the result. You can see here we get it. Here is the URI. We can check if that is not equal to null. Here we get the URI and we can assign it to our IV cropped image. Set image URI to our URI. So that is kind of the callback. And we also want to launch that contract. So when we click on the button, button choose image, set on click listener, crop activity result launcher dot launch. And here you could pass input parameters uh, that are of this type you specified here, but we don't have any. So we just pass null. And we are almost done. One important thing we shouldn't forget here is to actually register that crop activity in our manifest. Every activity in an Android app must be registered in the manifest. So let's do that. Let's open that. Go inside of this application tag and I will just paste this here so you can just write off this package name. It must be exactly the same way. But if you've done that, we can actually launch our app and test if that is working. Open the emulator here. You can see choose image. We click on that. Then this crop activity opens. We can either make a photo here or choose one. I will just choose one here from camera, any emulator picture here. You can see now we have that 16 to 9 ratio and we cannot change that. If you don't want that, as I said, just remove that option. And let's crop this, click here on crop. You could also rotate it. That library is pretty cool. Crop it and you can see here is our cropped image in our image view. So that's it for this video. If you're looking for more advanced Android courses, then take a look at pl-coding.com. That's my website and there you will find plenty of courses, also premium courses. And with the code philip 15 you can get 15% off of all my premium courses. I wish you a very nice day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.